Good afternoon, everyone. Um, the other co-authors of this uh, presentation are um, Waldek Świechowski from my laboratory of spray application technology and Paweł Czczyński from the laboratory of uh, Rhesusfer of our institute. Uh, the experience from the conventional and from integrated fruit production shows that the efficacy of pesticide and liquid fertilizer application uh, depends on the method of application. And this applies also, or maybe especially, uh, to uh, biopesticides and biostimulants um, based on the microorganisms because they may be affected by some components on, of the sprayer, such as pump filters, operating units, or the nozzles atomizing the liquid. So the microorganisms, during the application, they are subject to um, pressure, fluctuating pressure from vacuum to up to three megapascal uh, from the pump, um, by uh, possibly by the temperature also created by the pump, by the turbulent uh, flow and passing uh, sharp edges in the control valve and nozzles. Uh, it also passes through the mesh of filters and is subject to the turbulent flow um, and um, rapid release of pressure in the in the no nozzles. Uh, so uh, the question is whether the microorganisms that are uh, very vital and happy in the tank um, once we um, fill the sprayer are the same happy when they are discharged through the nozzles. Uh, some studies were made for um, nematodes, uh, but uh, we know very little about bacteria an impact of application parameters on bacteria. So uh, the objective of this uh, simple experiment was to evaluate the viability of the bacteria um, Enterobacter, Hemiprosuralis, and uh, Pseudomonas fluorescens uh, during passage through different components of spray application system of orchard sprayers, traditional orchard sprayers. Uh, Basically, there are two atomization systems used at uh, orchard sprayers. Uh, the most common is a hydraulic atomization system using diaphragm pump that generates, generates um, uh, high pressure up to 2.5 or maybe even up to 3 megapascal. And the pressure is fluctuating at a high frequency up to 50 hertz, 50 times per second, from vacuum to up to 3 megapascal. And, uh, the liquid is atomized by the, by the hollow cone nozzles with uh, very small openings and very turbulent flow through the nozzle. The other system is the pneumatic atomization system uh, that uses a uh, centrifugal pump, which generates low pressure, but which uh, operates at very high revolution rate, up to um, more than 3,000 revolutions per minute RPM. Um, and the spray is atomized, uh, the liquid is atomized uh, by the airshare nozzles. Uh, it is atomized with the high speed airstream. Uh, and these atomizers have large openings, so the flow is, is let's say, uh, relatively smooth. So we built, we developed uh, the stand, testing stand, uh, that included both those systems, hydraulic and uh, pneumatic. Um, for, the, um, for both those systems, we use the components that are on uh, typical uh, commercially available sprayers. So for the hydraulic atomization system, we had the diaphragm pump, uh, the diaphragm pump, the filter, uh, the control uh, valve uh, with the flow to the nozzles and return flow, and for uh, the pneumatic uh, atomization system, uh, we had the centrifugal pump, also the filter, the needle valve to control the flow to the atomizers. Um, and also we had the radial fan to produce the air jet, high speed air jet uh, to atomize the liquid in the airshare nozzles. And of course we use this uh, airshare nozzles or pneumatic atomizers if you like. Uh, this stand was controlled with the um, electronic um, controller. 
so we could adjust and monitor the RPM of all the rotating elements. Um, we could measure pressure and temperature at different locations in the circuit. So after the pump, after the filter, after the control unit, or the control, sorry, um, control valve uh, for both systems, for both circuits. And we could also measure the flow of the liquid uh, behind the pump and for the hydraulic system also behind the operating um, valve uh, to make a balance and also to know about uh, the return flow. Um, the parameters were controlled and monitored. All application parameters were controlled and monitored with the software. Uh, separate for a hydraulic and pneumatic system, and the software was developed especially for this uh, stand as well. Our spray liquid used in this experiment was a bacterial suspension of uh, Pseudomona fluorescence, a new strain, uh, PS49A, and a new strain of uh, Enterobacter nemicris ruralis. Um, both those uh, strains were isolated from a rhizosphere or uh, Fragaria genus. Uh, Pseudomonas was isolated from strawberry, rhizosphere of strawberry, and Enterobacter from rhizosphere of uh, white strawberry. Um, Pseudomonas fluorescence, the new strain of Pseudomonas fluorescence, uh, showed a stimulating effect, supporting plant growth and vitality, and this was experimentally proved possibly, which was not yet proved, possibly this may also um, show some, some uh, increase or it may stimulate the defense uh, abilities of the plant to uh, pathogens. Um, for the Enterobacter, uh, this showed uh, the antifugal activity uh, to Verticillium dahlia. So uh, this uh, bacteria can be used as a biopesticides to control uh, verticillium yield uh, on strawberries. So um, in the pneumatic system, the spray was applied and circulated in the stand, in the circuit, uh, for two hours, for 120 minutes, uh, simulating the application of the low spray volume, 55 liters per hectare, at the pressure 0.1 and 0.25 megapascal, low pre pressure. Um, and the, at this pressure and with the low pump output, the circulation rate, I mean the number of the, uh, let's say, um, passages of the liquid uh, in the system was five cycles per hour. So during the test, uh, the whole liquid passed the circuit 10 times. The samples were taken every 15 minutes from different uh, locations, and the locations are marked with those tags. So the samples were taken from the tank, from behind the pump, behind the filter, behind the operating um, valve, and uh, from the atomizers. And then for the, for the hydraulic system, we simulated higher spray volume typically used for these uh, sprayers, 450 liters per hectare, at higher pressure, 0.5, 1, and 1 1.5 megapascal, with the higher output of the pump, uh, the number of cycles per hour was 12, so the, the flow was much more intensive. So during the test, we had 24 passages of liquid through the circuit. And this is normal for these kind of sprayers because um, in, for these um, sprayers we have the operating valve with the back flow, so that uh, uh, liquid is always circulating in the system of the sprayer. The samples were also taken every 15 minutes uh, also in different locations behind the pump filter operating um, the valve and from the uh, nozzles. Uh, then the samples were diluted and um, inoculated on agar, incubated for 72 hours, and then uh, the developing colonies were uh, county, counted uh, to evaluate the uh, survival rate, let me say. And when we look at the result, uh, we can see that this uh, survival rate was pretty high, 
for the pneumatic system working on a low pressure. Of course, time is, uh, is a factor, in, um, significant factor, slightly significant. Um, so uh, it has a significant effect accounting for uh, five to six percent of the total treatment variation. So the effect is not very strong. For uh, pseudomonas, also location was a significant factor, which means location means the place where we took the sample. So by that we could identify which component of the sprayer uh, influence the mortality of the bacteria. And we found when looking close to, to our data that it was a filter that caused the, the increased mortality of, slightly increased mortality of bacteria. But anyway, uh, the, the uh, rate of, of survival was, was pretty high, 94% uh, for Enterobacter and 98% uh, for Pseudomonas after two hours of circulating, so pretty intensive. Uh, let's see, flow. Uh, this is for hydraulic systems. So now high pressure and uh, high um, uh, cycle rate, uh, 24 cycles during the test. And here we can see that uh, the rate is lower for those pressures, uh, higher pressures. Also filter showed uh, uh, some effect on mortality of uh, bacteria. Uh, here, the location, it was responsible for more than 6% of the total uh, treatment variation, so stronger effect than for pneumatic. Uh, for enterobacter, uh, we found that for the lower pressure, still high, 0.5 megapascal, uh, the, the survival rate was the same as for pneumatic, but for the higher pressures, 1 megapascal and 1.5 megapascal, it dropped to 82%. Um, so we made also additional tests with the with hydraulic system, only with the hydraulic system, simulating very low, um, uh, very low spray volumes, which are not really used. So uh, it is a little bit um, in realistic possible, but um, in real in real realistic uh, situation. But we wanted to check how the bacteria reacts to very, very intensive flow. So a very low spray volume, high pump output, which made uh, the, the liquid circulate very intensively, 97 cycles per hour. So during two hours, nearly 2,000 times that the spray was passing through the um, circuit. And we operated the, the um, system at 0.5 and 1.5 megapascal. We took samples every 10 minutes, just from the tank and from the nozzles. And here are the results. Uh, for the low pressure, 0.5 uh, megapascal, uh, still the survival uh, rate was relatively high, 80%. But when we use the higher pressure, um, 15, oh, sorry, 1.5 megapascal, we can see that 50% of bacteria died after 70 minutes of uh, the operation of the system, and after 100 minutes, all the bacteria were died, were, were dead. So there was a very strong effect of pressure and time, and of course, the interaction of those two factors. So uh, number of cycles at high pressure, in other words, time and high pressure, uh, is what, what is deadly for uh, Pseudomonas. You may also wonder um, what was the temperature uh, increase uh, caused by this uh, very intensive flow of the liquid in the system. You can see that with the small number of cycles, the increase was uh, not very big from 10 degrees up to uh, more or less 15 degrees by 5 uh, degrees Celsius, but with the very intensive flow, uh, the temperature, temperature rise from 15 uh, up to nearly 40 degrees, which is still far 
below uh, what the bacteria can stand because it can stand to the temperatures more than 50 degrees Celsius. So um, the conclusions are that uh, biopesticides uh, based on those uh, new strains of, of uh, bacteria can be applied with uh, standard um, sprayers, uh, both with pneumatic and hydraulic systems, operating, a, let, let's say, standard normal application parameters. High pressure used by the hydraulic atomization system only slightly affects bacteria viability, but in interaction with time, effect in, is increased because the time of application is a crucial factor uh, that has to be considered by those who apply those uh, uh, those biopesticides. Uh, and when applying low spray volumes of uh, Pseudomonas fluorescence, new strain uh, suspension uh, with high capacity pump normally used on the, on the sprayers, which will increase the number of the passages in the sprayer, the bacterial mortality increases very fast, especially at high pressures. Thank you very much.